and welcome to Friday Reads, where we help you find your next read. My name is Jill. And I'm Julie. And this week, we are back to nonfiction. We're doing the Dewey Decimal System, the 300s, which is the social science section. So I'll turn it over to Jill for her first pick. This is an interesting section. So the first thing I found in my section was The Glass Castle by Jeanette Walls. This is uh, kind of an older book, but... uh, worth reading if you haven't read it yet. It's a memoir about uh, Jeanette Walls growing up. Jeanette Walls grew up with parents whose ideals and stubborn nonconformity were both their curse and their salvation. Rex and Rose Mary Walls had four children. In the beginning, they lived like nomads. Living some among the southwest desert towns, camping in the mountains, Rex was a charismatic, brilliant man who, when sober, captured his children's imagination, teaching them physics, geology, and above all, how to embrace life fearlessly. Rosemary, who painted and wrote and couldn't stand the responsibility of providing for her family, called herself an excitement addict. Cooking a meal that would be consumed in 15 minutes had no appeal when she could make a painting that might last forever. Later, when the money ran out or the romance of the wandering life faded, the Walls retreated to the dismal West Virginia mining town, and the family, Rex Walls, had done everything he could to escape. He drank. He stole the grocery money and disappeared for days. As the dysfunction of the family escalated, Jeanette and her brother and sisters had to fend for themselves, supporting one another as they weathered their parents' betrayals and finally found the resources to and will to leave home. What is so astonishing about Jeanette Walls is not that she had the guts and tenacity and intelligence to get out, but that she describes her parents with such deep affection and generosity. Hers is a story of triumph against all odds, but also a tender moving tale of unconditional love in a family that, despite its profound flaws, gave her the fiery determination to carve out a successful life on their own terms. For two decades, decades, Jeanette Walls hid her roots. Now she tells her own story. And there is a movie on this, but I would recommend the book over the movie because I think the movie goes for, or the book goes further into things and the movie kind of just glasses over them. So. I read that book, too. That was a very good book, and the perseverance and tenacity of her was incredible. I did like the movie, too, but definitely the book better. <clears throat> My first pick is Isabel Allende's um, The Soul of a Woman. This is in our new nonfiction section. This was just published in 2021. So it starts as, when I say that I was a feminist in kindergarten, I am not exaggerating, begins this book. As a child, she watched her mother, abandoned by her husband, provide for her three small children without resources or voice. Isabel became a fierce and defiant little girl, determined to fight for the life her mother couldn't have. As a young woman coming of age in the 1960s, she rode the second wave of feminism. Among a tribe of like-minded journalists, Elende for the first time felt comfortable in her own skin as they wrote with a knife between our teeth about women's issues. She has seen what the movement has accomplished in the course of her lifetime and over the course of three passionate marriages she has learned how to grow as a woman while having a partner, when to step away, and the rewards of embracing one's sexuality. So what feeds the soul of feminists and all women today? To be safe, to be valued, to live in peace, to have their own resources, to be connected, to have control over our bodies and lives, and above all, to be loved. On all these fronts, there is much work yet to be done, and in this book, the author hopes, will light the torches of our daughters and granddaughters. They will have to live for us as we live for our mothers and carry on with the work still left to be finished. Our short story discussion group here at the library read a couple of her short stories and of Clay Are We Created and Two Words, and the group was definitely fans of her writing. She's also the author of the best-selling books, The House of the Spirits and A Long Petal of the Sea. So she's a favorite author of quite a few people. I feel she writes a lot, too. <coughs> All right. My next one is The Poison City, Flint's Water and the American Urban Tragedy by Anna Clark. When the people of Flint, Michigan, turned on their faucets in April 2014, <coughs> the, potter, the water <coughs> pouring out was poisoned with lead and other toxins. Through a series of disastrous decisions, the state government had switched the city's water to a source that corroded Flint's aging lead pipes. Complaints about the foul-smelling water were dismissed. The residents of Flint, a largely poor African-American city of about 100,000 people, were not seen as credible 
even in matters of their own lives. It took 18 months of activism and a band of dogged outsiders to force the state to admit that the water was poisonous. But this was only after 12 people died and Flint's children suffered irreparable harm. The long battle for accountability and humane response to this man-made disaster have only just begun. In the first full-length account of this epic failure, The Poison City recounts the gripping story of Flint's poisoned water through the people who caused it, suffered from it, and exposed it. It is a chronicle of one town, but could also be any American city, all made precarious by the neglect of infrastructure and the erosion of democratic decision-making. Cities like Flint are set up to fail, and for the people who live and work in them, the consequences may be mortal. So, yeah. Didn't know there was a book about that. Sure made a lot of the news back then, but wow. And I guess, I don't know if they still have water yet. Wow. My second pick is also a book that you'll find in our new nonfiction currently. It is Uncomfortable Conversations with a Black Man by Emmanuel Acho. The book is an urgent primer on race and racism from the host of the viral hit video series Uncomfortable Conversations with a Black Man. You cannot fix a problem you do not know you have. So begins this author's book in his essential guide to the truths Americans need to know to address the systemic racism that has recently electrified all 50 of our states. There is a fix, he says, but in order to access it, we're going to have to have some uncomfortable conversations. In this book, the author takes on all the questions, large and small, insensitive and taboo, many white Americans are afraid to ask, yet which all Americans need the answers to now more than ever. With the same open-hearted generosity that has made his video series a phenomenon, the author explains the vital core of such fraught concepts as white privilege, cultural appropriation, and reverse racism. In his own words, he provides a space of compassion and understanding in a discussion that can often lack both. He asks only for the reader's curiosity, but along the way he will galvanize all of us to join the anti-racist fight. This ex-NFL linebacker has also written a book for young people who have the power to affect sweeping change. He has uncomfortable conversations with a black boy. And that's just a one way young readers can begin to short circuit racism within their own lives and communities. This book creates a safe, judgment-free space for curious kids to start asking questions they've long been afraid to verbalize. So uncomfortable conversations with a black man and uncomfortable conversations with a black boy. Very timely. Good topic. Next book. There is some self-help in 300s, (laughs) and this is one of them. This is a book for parents of gay kids, a question and answer guide to everyday life by Daniel Owens Reed and Kristen Russo. This is written in an accessible Q&A format. Here, finally, is a go-to resource for parents hoping to understand and communicate with their gay child. Through their LGBTQ-oriented website, the authors are uniquely experienced. They answer parents' many questions and share insight and guidance to both emotional and practical topics. Filled with real-life experience from gay kids and parents, this is the book gay kids want their parents to read. So, June is Pride Month. If your son or daughter has come out as gay, this might help you. My third pick is an older book. Um, There is an economics section within the 300s. So my third pick is Saving on a Shoestring, How to Cut Expenses, Reduce Debt, Stash More Cash by Barbara O'Neill. In 2020, this author published the ebook Flipping a Switch, Your Guide to Happiness and Financial Security in Later Life. So you may be familiar with her from there. But in this book, um, it's a clear, practical guide to personal finance that offers simple plans and savvy solutions to your money problems. It's been updated and revised, um, gives you scores of tips on how to cut spending, reduce your debt, increase your current net worth, lower your income taxes, and save more money. She has easy-to-use worksheets to help you identify financial goals, track cash flow, and maximize the value of your money. More important, you'll learn to overcome procrastination, one of the most common financial errors, and take the first steps in your financial action plan today. If your debts are growing while your savings are shrinking, if you work hard at your job but don't know where the money goes, this inspiring guide can change your financial life. With the right attitude, proper planning, and a bit of discipline, even you can achieve financial independence and retire in comfort. So check out one of the books by Barbara (coughs) O'Neill. Classic. <laughs> um, this is Native American Myths and Ledges by Richard Erdos Alfonso Ortiz. I found this in the news section, so it's recently been published. 
is a gathering of 160 tales and from 80 tribal groups to offer rich and lively panorama of Native American mythic heritage. And it also has drawings in it. And it's got this cool gold on the side. I thought that was great. Uh, this collection of Native American myths is wonderful. It is divided into 10 parts that cover myths about the creation of man, about the creation of the world, about the sky, the moon, and the stars, about monsters and heroes, about war, about love, about trickster tales, stories with animals, and stories with ghosts and spirits, and stories about the end of human life and the end of the world. So one example that I had read in here was called Glue's Cap Grants Three Wishes, and it had the little tagline of, even the great Glue's Clap can behave like a trickster, especially when people ask him for the frivolous. So I feel like these are It'd be fun to listen to. So then that one came from a legend that was reported in 1844. So if you're interested in some Native American myths and legends and hear their stories, this would be for you. My fourth pick today is The Girls Are Gone, the true story of two sisters who vanished, the father who kept searching, and the adults who conspired to keep the truth hidden by Michael Broadcorb and Allison Mann. This was published in 2018, but we've got it in the news section. It's new to our library. Um, and this book is found in the social problems section of the 300s. That was an interesting section to pull books from. And this is a Midwest story. So on the evening of April 19th, 2013, Gianna and Samantha disappeared. They were 13 and 14 years old when they ran away from their Lakeville, Minnesota home. They were two of five children born to David and Sandra, and the teenage sisters vanished in the midst of their parents' divorce. The girl's father, David, worked tirelessly with law enforcement to search day and night for his two missing daughters, following every lead while raising three remaining children at home. He hired private investigators and he kept looking. Their mother, Sandra, used her newfound freedom to vacation around the world, abandoning her children. She was a flight attendant and she had easy access to this lifestyle. And as the investigation and testified, catching the attention of the media, Sandra also disappeared. On November 18, 2015, police found the girls at Whitehorse Ranch in Herman, Minnesota, where they had been living with owners Gina and Doug Dahlin. So, this book puts together a lot of things. The two authors came together in 2016, and their passion for finding truth and justice through different mediums led them to partner in writing The Girls Are Gone. The two authors spent two years working together, investigating, researching, and writing to find the answers to the many questions that had been left unanswered for years concerning this story. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, wow. I don't remember hearing that story in the Midwest, either. but it's, like I said, Lakeville, Minnesota, so. <clears throat> that, back to that money section that we're talking <laughs> about. <laughs> Dave Ramsey, The Total Money Makeover. So this is kind of an older book, but I think it's a classic, and he's my favorite guy. Mm -hmm. He does have, like, programs, too, but I think even he would recommend you go to the library and check out his book. Mm -hmm. If you would live like no one else, later you can live like no one else. Build up your money muscles with America's favorite finance coach. He says, okay, folks, do you want to learn to turn those fat and flabby expenses into a well-toned budget? <laughs> do you want to transform your sad and skinny little bank account into a bulked up cash machine? Then get in the program. There's one sure way to whip your finances into shape, and that's with the total money makeover. By now you've heard of the nutty get-rich-quick schemes, the fiscal diet fads that leave you with a lot of kooky ideas but not a penny in your pocket. If you're tired of the lies and sick of the false promises, take a look at this. It's the simplest, most straightforward game for completely making over your money habits, and it's based on results, not pie-in-the-sky fantasies. With Total Money Makeover, you'll be able to design a surefire plan for paying off all debt, meaning cars, houses, everything. <clears throat> Recognize the 10 most dangerous money myths, these will kill you, and secure a big fat nest egg for emergencies and retirement. And I listen to him on the radio, and like that paying off the debt is a big thing. And mm -hmm. like even the houses, and there's people that are like, oh, it takes them like 18 months, and they do it. So, yeah, I recommend that. Yeah, he's a good guy to listen to. <clears throat> and my last pick today is The Brave Learner, Finding Everyday Magic in Homeschool Learning and Life by Julie Bogart, published in 2019. And this is found in the education section of the 300s. So for the homeschoolers, that's where you find um, books relating to that. This book is described as a joyful and accessible approach to homeschooling that harnesses children's natural curiosity and makes learning a part of everyday life, whether they're in elementary or high school. 
Um, Julie Bogert is the popular voice of common sense and compassion for home educators, her online coaching community, the Homeschool Alliance, her podcast, A Brave Writer's Life in Brief, and her YouTube channel are lifelines for tens of thousands of weary homeschoolers all over the world. In this book, she distills decades of experience homeschooling her five now grown children, developing curricula and training homeschooling families around the world to show parents how to make education an exciting, even enchanting experience for their kids, whether they're again, they're in elementary or high school. So check out The Brave Learner, finding everyday magic in homeschool, learning, and life. Awesome. Well, thanks for watching, and we hope we helped you find your next read. Yeah, tune in again next week. We'll be going to um, back to fiction, and we're going to do animal books since our theme for the summer is Tales and Tales, so we'll be pick picking books that feature animals. We thank you for watching. Leave us comments in the comments section if you have favorite books. We love to hear from you. Bye! Bye.